over 30 FPS, so I mean, whatever though. I wanted to see how it played out, and it's playing out pretty good, considering I'm running fraps, and I have the whole game maxed out right now. So if you have a system similar to mine, uh, GTX 560, uh, the AMD equivalent would be, I guess, uh, 6950. Either the one gigabyte version or the two gigabyte version. I'm not sure about that because I have the one gigabyte MS uh, MSI GTX 560. If I remember correctly, the AMD 6950 two gigabytes is slightly better than uh, the GTX 560 Ti. care if I die, I just want to see the game. No, oh, the smoke is pretty nice. It doesn't look 2D at all. It looks like it's actually got some depth, I guess, to it. I want to see the trees. The one thing that games try to do to trick you into, into uh, not really noticing it, they try to make you think they look good, but they really don't. Uh, they, they have like these 2D sprites that every time you turn it actually turns with you uh, not here it seems all the, all the leaves are rendered individually it seems pretty nice the branches the motion blur is a pretty nice, nice touch uh, you do see some kind of flat leaves though same as the branches but it's not too bad I think the one thing that game developers still have not gotten right are the trees and the organic wildlife really I mean look at the tree trunks protruding from the ground it, the the base of the trunk really doesn't look all that great it looks kinda out of place this one looks pretty decent but it just that's the one thing they really need to work on I think to get gamers immersed more in the game it's just pretty late to the party I know uh, uploading this video kinda late you know, there's hundreds of videos out there right now but just in case someone wanted to get uh, another look uh, look at the game with uh, my settings and uh, my configuration. I'll be posting my my computer specs on the description below. It looks really, really, really good. I'd say it gives Metro 2033 a run for its money. I know one thing Metro really does great is the atmosphere. The lighting in that game is just amazing, I think. The only thing I don't like about that game really is just it feels like a rail shooter. It's kind of linear, but uh, when it comes to graphics, I don't, nothing really matches Metro 2033 yet. I don't think. I might be wrong in that. Don't, you know, don't take my word for it. But... Really, I don't see much slowdown at all. I mean, if any slowdown happens, it's from uh, Fraps when it has to stop recording and record again because the file size max is 4 gigabytes, and I'm pretty sure that just recording 20 seconds of gameplay is already hitting the 4 gigabyte limit, and it has to split up the files every time it reaches the 4 gigabyte limit. So, anytime the game slows down, I'm pretty sure to give it that. Otherwise, there's really no no slowdown that I can tell. Except for that, yeah, the particle effect, that's intense right there. I think that it, that probably has to do more with the video RAM on your GPU. Don't take my word for it though, I'm just guessing at it, but that's probably what, what makes your it takes up a lot of resources, I'm guessing, from the video RAM on the graphics card. I'm sure if you have a uh, two gigabytes of VRAM on your GPU, uh, you won't run into that problem. I would really like to test that out, though. Otherwise, the game looks and runs great. There's really no no downside to the update whatsoever really. Well keep in mind that I do have a pretty top of the line C 
CPU for gaming right now, uh, the i5-2500K is undoubtedly the the best gaming processor out right now. Uh, sure, there's a better one, there's an i7-2600K, but uh, you won't really see any improvements for games with the i7. You won't, you won't, the hyper, uh, hyper threading doesn't do anything for games, so... Unless you're editing videos professionally or anything such as that, you really don't need a i7 2600K for gaming. You'll be perfectly fine with an i5 2500K, uh, especially if you overclock it. This this thing is a beast overclocking. Uh, you can go up to 4.5 gigahertz like it's nothing. Just go on the BIOS setting of your motherboard and just uh, up the multiplier from 33 to 45 and you have uh, 4.5 gigahertz overclock right there uh, keep in mind that you can only overclock the CPU if you have a P67 chipset motherboard or the new Z68 chipset motherboard if, you have, if you're using the H61 or H67 motherboards you cannot overclock the processor only the the integrated GPU of the processor itself. Um, if you have the Z68 chipset that just came out, you can in fact overclock both aspects of the CPU, both the integrated GPU and the CPU. But if you have a dedicated graphics card, it's really no point. If you were deciding on what processor to get for gaming, uh, definitely go with an i5-2500K. Right now there's really no AMD alternative to it that's uh, viable for gaming if you're expecting high-end results uh, you could wait for the bulldozer AMD CPUs that are coming out soon however keep in mind that the new Ivory Bridge and Enthusiast Sandy Bridge uh, CPUs are coming out soon as well so until the benchmarks out for the bulldozer architecture and the new Ivory Bridge and the Enthusiast Sandy Bridge CPUs are out I wouldn't recommend investing in a bulldozer right now because from from the okay great so it seems my power went out um while I was playing the game and uh really freaked me out because I thought my power supply blew up or something uh but well alright uh as I was saying I was talking about the the new AMD Bulldozer CPU coming out and the uh, Ivy Bridge and the uh, Sandy Bridge Enthusiast CPUs coming out and uh, I was trying to compare them and I was saying that well if you're gonna get a, a CPU anytime soon uh, if you don't wanna wait for a Bulldozer or the Intel alternative go ahead and get a 2500K the i5 2500K because there's really no solid no solid benchmarks out for the bulldozer CPU so we can't really tell for sure how much of an improvement it's going to be over the current gen the second generation of the i5 uh, Intel processors and we're not sure how it's going to compare to the new generation uh, Ivy Bridge CPUs from Intel and the uh, Sandy Bridge Enthusiast CPUs that are gonna require a new socket so um, right now I'd say definitely go ahead and get a 2500k i5 for 220 bucks off newegg.com and you know I'd get an aftermarket cooler such as the 212 plus from uh, I think it was a cooler master I don't forget yeah well just look up the 212 plus and you'll find it. It's like it's really cheap. It should be around 30 bucks, and you can easily you can overclock uh, the i5 2500K to 4.5 gigahertz uh, without a problem. I have it. I have it overclocked to 4.5 gigahertz myself, and I get uh, max load temps. I get 60 Celsius on average with an ambient room temperature of 87 degrees in the afternoon, and because it gets pretty hot here in Florida during the summer. Uh, 95 degrees Fahrenheit outside <clears throat> so th those are definitely respectable load temps so yeah it's pretty much my whole video I guess uh, thank you for watching and as always I'm gonna be uploading more Call of Duty Black Ops videos uh, here and there um, 
I'll be uploading some more Crisis 2 videos, maybe some Metro 2033 videos as well. And uh, as always, my World of Warcraft videos of the Firelands Rage that we're doing with my guild. And uh, if you like any of these videos, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be uploading way more videos uh, soon. And thank you for watching.